All right. So, how's everyone this morning? Good. Yeah, I'm I want to start by saying that, you know, if you're still in, in God's presence and you just want to completely check out, I'll send you my sermon notes. Okay. <laughs> so, listening to Chris's sermon last week, I, I got really excited because I was like, oh, oh, I've, I've experienced that and, and that. And so, I'd like to just quickly recap his sermon by sharing some of my story with the Holy Spirit. So I grew up in the traditional church, and even though there was always reverence and acknowledgement that he was the third person of the Trinity, there, there wasn't much conversation about who he was and what he did. Except I had the Sunday school teacher in grade seven, who sometimes would get halfway through her sermon, well, her teaching, and then she'd kind of get this look on her face, and then... She'd check if there were any other adults around, and she'd ta start telling us about the Holy Spirit. And so I was curious, and then what happened during this time is we moved from Kharteng down to the coast, and I found myself in another traditional church. Um, but what was very cool about this church is it had an incredible library and an incredible librarian. She was, she was quite sort of proper, um, steel bound, a little bit intimidating, but really helpful, and she'd already passed me a few interesting books. So one Sunday, I sort of screwed up my courage and presented myself to her and said, do you have anything on the Holy Spirit? And I got this sort of raised eyebrow and a little nod, and then she took me way to the back of the library, and it was like that last shelf against the against the wall, and then from the second shelf, she took off this book, and she handed it to me like she was giving me uranium. <laughs> and it was powerful stuff. What made this book so powerful is it was mainly scripture. A little bit of commentary in between, but lots and lots of scripture. And the irony is, it is the spirit that reveals the truth to us. So he was teaching me about himself through the scripture. And as I came to recognize the Holy Spirit's presence and, and his voice, I could look back at my childhood and go, oh, there he was. When I doubted my salvation and he comforted me and reassured me that I am saved. And, and there he was when I was an ugly preteen. I feel sorry for my mom. <laughs> and I'd kind of wandered off. And it was his loving kindness that was drawing me back and saying, don't you miss this? Don't you miss the, the grace and forgiveness of the cross? Don't you miss the arms of the Father? And so he brought me back. And then I could go even further back to that moment of, of first faith. And I was five at the time, and I was standing against um, the fence at the bottom of the playground because the playground bully had decided yet again that I was not allowed on uh, the jungle gym. And he brought to mind all of those times that my mother had told me about the Holy Spirit and about Jesus and about how much love, um, getting nervous? <laughs> how much God loved me and he cared for me. And in that moment, I asked Jesus, are you real? And are you here for me? And I realize now that it was the Holy Spirit's voice that brought the answer. Because I clearly heard, yes, I am. So during this time of early high school, when I was getting to know the Holy Spirit, it just happened to be the time in history where we had the Toronto Blessing. And I saw some wonderful things and some weird things. And I put it like that because there was the wonder, the awe of God's genuine outpouring on the local church. And what they characterized for me is it really brought honor to Jesus. It glorified his name. It brought restoration and repentance. And there was healing, both supernaturally of physical but also of emotional hurt. 
But I also saw some things that were really weird. And I saw some counterfeit. And if I want to characterize how I knew that it was counterfeit, it didn't bring honor to Jesus. It brought honor to man. And it didn't bring unity in the body. It brought division. The second weird thing I saw was this chasing after an experience. You know, humans, we're weird. Um, If we have a nice, fuzzy experience, we want to have it again and again and again. And I saw people trying to manipulate to get the same experience that they'd had the week before. And you had to come with them, right? Which brings me to the third weirdness, which was um, the comparison. It was like there was this checklist of experiences you had to have with the Holy Spirit. Did you laugh? Did you cry? Did you feel his presence? Did you speak in tongues? And if you couldn't fulfill the entire checklist, what was wrong with you? And this has been my experience of the Holy Spirit. So I'm a teacher by profession, and sometimes out of necessity, when we've got a big class, we've got to teach to the middle and hope for the best. But God is not limited like us. He's all present, all powerful. And so he can give us each an individual tutor in the person of the Holy Spirit. And so we don't have to have the same experience as everyone else. We're getting a unique experience that's tailor-made to our needs. And I also found the scripture that was shared two weeks ago really helpful. It says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. And it reminds me of what Jesus said to Nicodemus. He said, the wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but it cannot tell you where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone who's born of the Spirit. So we can't look back at how God has dealt with us in the past and expect that he will deal with us like that again because we've moved on, he's moved on, he's doing a new thing. And even the diversity of experience that we have personally, sometimes it's deeply emotional. Um, Scripture tells us that the Spirit um, delves into the heart of God and into the heart of man. And sometimes he goes fishing for that, that deep hurt that's become so integral that we've kind of accepted that this is who we are now and the restriction that comes with that. But he says to us, Jesus came to set the captive free. So no, nope, hand that over. And that can be really emotional. Tears, joy. Sometimes he's sifting through our head. And he's, he's finding that thought and going, yeah, no, that's not true. Let me remind you of the scripture, of the promise, of the hope, of the prophecy that I've given you about this. And that's not emotional, that's cerebral. And then the third role that he has is he's the messenger between the Father and the Son and us. So sometimes all it is is a post note on the fridge. Dad says, take out the trash. Dad says, you need to rest now. Dad says, stop watching that. Um, The other thing I learned during this time was not to be scared of the weird because the Holy Spirit is with us and he is discerning. And so there were meetings that I walked into and even though it was complete strangers, I felt like I was with friends because the Spirit was there and there was that unity of purpose and the purpose is to glorify the Son. And there were other meetings I walked into. It's kind of like when you've gone to a party, a house party, and you don't really know the host, and you've got a friend who's come with you who's really wise, and they kind of walk in, check everything out, and go, now we've got to get out of here before there's a police raid. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Have you had that experience? No, never. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. 
So let's turn to some scripture. And we're reading from Acts, Acts, uh, Acts chapter 8, reading from verses 9 to 24. And I'm going to pause for a moment because I always get frustrated. So people, I haven't got there yet. Acts 8. Reading from verse 9, and I'm reading from the International Standard Version. Now in that city, there was a, name, a man named Simon. He was practicing occult arts and thrilling the people of Samaria, claiming to be someone great. Everyone from the least to the greatest paid close attention to him, saying, This is what we call the great power of God. They paid careful attention to him because he had thrilled them for a long time with his occult practices. But when Philip proclaimed the good news about the kingdom of God and about the name of Jesus, the Messiah, men and women believed and were baptized. Even Simon believed, and after he was baptized, he became devoted to Philip. He was amazed to see the signs and great miracles that were happening. Now, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that the Samaritans had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. They went down and prayed for them to receive the Holy Spirit. Before this, they had not come on, he had not come on any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on him, and they received the Spirit. Now when Simon saw that the Spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered their money and, and said, Give me this power too, so that when I lay my hands on someone, he will receive the Holy Spirit. What do you think Peter's response to this was? <laughs> but Peter told him, May your money perish with you, because you thought you could obtain God's free gift with money. You have no part or share in what we're saying, because your heart isn't right with God. So repent of this wickedness of yours and pray to the Lord that, if possible, your heart's intent may be forgiven. For I see that you've been poisoned by bitterness and you are held captive by sin. This is the important line. Simon answered, Both of you pray to the Lord for me, that none of the things that you have said will happen. And I think that even though Simon believed, he didn't understand. He didn't understand that Jesus is the perfecter and author of our faith. Because if he'd understood that, he would have been following Jesus not Philip. He didn't understand that our righteousness is like filthy rags. That this is not a power we're dealing with. This is the third person of God. And our response to his presence should be that of Isaiah's. When Isaiah was in God's presence, he said, I'm doomed because I'm a man of filthy lips and I I live amongst people of filthy lips. And he didn't understand that we're saved from that doom because God paid a ransom for us to save us from our empty lives. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver. It was the precious blood of Jesus Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. I, I also don't see any evidence that Simon had a relationship with God. Because when Peter says, so repent of this wickedness of yours, and you pray to the Lord, his response is, uh, both of you pray. Not me, you. So it's kind of like, when I get to this point, I remember those old um, TV shows, game shows, where they said, not only have you won, not only has Jesus purchased salvation and grace for us? 
and paid our debts so that we can be reconciled with the Father. He's also invited us to the greatest party of all time, and that's the marriage of the bride and the groom, Jesus and his church. And there's more. He's also sent the groomsmen to make sure that we make it to the wedding on time. And I've kind of got this mental image that if I try to do this without the Holy Spirit, I'm going to be walking down the street. I haven't done the washing, so I've picked something out of the, the washing. Okay, dirty, wrinkled dress. And I'm carrying my heels because I've broken one of them. And I'm still trying to put my makeup on. And the Holy Spirit rolls up in the limousine and says, would you like a lift? And I go, no, 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 I've got this. We would be crazy to only take that first gift home. In closing, I'd like to talk about just one of the benefits of riding with the Holy Spirit. As Chris read from 1 Corinthians 12, verse 3 last week. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And for me, the power in this is anyone who's ever been hangry, and I said to Kerry, I'm going to reference her, okay? Anyone who's ever been hangry knows that our soul has got very little power over the flesh, okay? We need spirit to overcome flesh. And if we don't have the, the, the power of the Holy Spirit to help us, we are in this constant warfare to give up any ground, to give anything over to the Lordship of Christ. It's like two, one step forward, two steps back. So Galatians 5 verse 16 says, but I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit. But the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. Who, like me, has said, I'm sorry, Lord, I'm only human? Okay? And our flesh is against the Spirit. But what the Scripture tells us is when we submit to the desire of the Spirit, then He comes against our flesh. And it's not our puny little souls anymore that are trying to arm wrestle for control. Now we are talking about the God Almighty that Isaiah referenced, the King of the universe, and He is fighting for us. Who do you think is going to win? Right. So I preach short. Here's the ending. <laughs> Psalm 103 verse 2 says, Praise the Lord my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. And this morning I want to say to you, if you've never known the benefit of relationship with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we'd like to pray for you today. And if, like me, you've had those moments where you've forgotten the benefit of the Holy Spirit. You, no, I don't need a lift. I'm fine with my broken heels. I'd like to pray for you this morning as well. Okay. Lord, all I worship this morning has been focused on the fact that you are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our worship and our adoration and our complete focus. And Lord, we thank you that you care so much about us making it to the finish line, to being part of your bride, that you've sent your bridegroom to come and help us. And I just pray, Lord, that wherever we're holding on to that self-reliance this morning, that you'll loosen our grip. And wherever we're struggling this morning, whether it's on our heart or our head or our will, you'll come and take us by the hand and lead us into this week. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Thank you so much for joining us. You might be asking yourself the question, how can I take this further? Firstly, you can send us your contact details to cindy at centerchurch.co.za where we can include you in our online connect groups and you can receive our daily devotional. Secondly, you can hop on our website where you can access previous sermons and find out more about who we are at Centre Church. Thirdly, if you consider yourself as part of Centre Church, we want to thank you so much for your ongoing financial partnership. The banking details are on the website. Thank you so much for joining us and hope you have an amazing day.